Ancient people believed that chaos was the primeval state of the universe. Much like a big pile of Lego bricks scattered across your living room, the building blocks for creation were in place, but they remained unformed until some deity came along and imposed order. In ancient writings, chaos was often symbolized by the raging sea, and we can find that imagery in the very first verses of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. When you start to recognize chaos imagery, it casts new light on familiar Bible stories. Think of the story of Noah's Ark where God turns the world into a raging sea. This judgment wasn't simply a big flood. It was God allowing the watery forces of chaos to overwhelm the earth. Going forward in the Old Testament, we come to the story of the Exodus. The climax of the Hebrews' escape involves Moses dividing a sea into two halves. This miracle points back to Genesis and creates a parallel between the creation of the world and the birth of the new nation of Israel. Chaos imagery is even present in the Gospels. When Jesus walked on the stormy waters of the Sea of Galilee, he was showing his power over the forces of chaos. As we can see, chaos imagery is present in both Testaments. But the sea wasn't the only symbol used for chaos. Primordial chaos was often personified in the form of sea monsters. One such monster is the Babylonian goddess Tiamat. In the Babylonian version of creation, Tiamat fights with the god Marduk. After a detailed battle, Marduk kills Tiamat and cuts her body in two. He then uses the divided pieces to form the heavens and the earth. Something very similar happens in Genesis. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. These waters are apparently the deep mentioned in Genesis 1-2. The Hebrew word translated deep is tehom, which some scholars argue is closely akin to Babylonian Tiamat. This isn't the only place foreign sea monsters show up in the Bible in a creation context. Psalm 74 describes God creating the world, but in the middle of the description we find this. You divided the sea by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters on the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. Yours is the day, yours also the night. You have established the heavenly lights and the sun. This passage has God destroying sea monsters by dividing the chaotic waters. In this case, scholars know the imagery comes from the literature of ancient Ugarit, where the god Baal battles Yam, who is portrayed as a chaotic, churning sea, and a terrifying sea dragon named Tanun or Litanu. These terms are equivalent to the Hebrew words in the psalm. You divided the sea, Yam, by your might. You broke the heads of the sea monsters, Taninim, on the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan, Liuyatan. So what in the world is going on here? God didn't really fight literal sea monsters at the beginning of creation. The Bible's authors are purposely taking competing religious views and turning them around. The writers want everyone to know that Yahweh, the God of Israel, defeated chaos, not Marduk, or Baal, or any other deity. Yahweh is the one who sets order to the universe and holds chaos at bay. Ultimately, it is Yahweh who will create a new world without chaos. 
Look how Revelation describes eternity. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. This verse is not depicting a world without large bodies of water. The message is that chaos and all that opposes God will be defeated once and for all. For more information on these topics and many others, visit drmsh.com or thedivinecouncil.com.